unmute. Good morning, folks. Let's get airborne. Sorry about that. I was on uh, mute. Uh, but uh, welcome to our primary live trade brief Tuesday morning. Another uh, rip your face off rally at the open or not. So uh, somebody asked this in the hunters a little bit ago, and I figured I'd answer it live. So the other day I said, hey, if you see the futures down a couple hundred points or up a couple hundred points, maybe buy some puts right at the open or some calls at, at the open. Listen to the words carefully. Couple hundred points. When I see the futures up like 600 on nothing, I'd actually do the exact opposite. I would have bought puts at the open. I'm not saying that because the market's slowly going down a little bit, but couple hundred points usually, what's that mean? Couple hundred points on the futures means people sitting in their bunny slippers at home, drinking coffee, going, oh, wow, we're going to have a rip your face off rally today. That's when you do it. Or an implosion, like, oh, the futures are down 200, 300 points. We're going to really implode, right? So usually the the retail, what do we call the first hour of trading? We call it amateur hour, which is good because folks like us who are pro amateurs can really take advantage of that. But if you see usually massiveness, unless it's breaking news, nuclear war in Ukraine and the futures are down a thousand, buy puts. What I'm saying is like on a morning like today, up 650 on the futures. I'm like, what? Got in my group. I'm like, everybody's like, that's dumb you'll probably see it fade. So there's a, there's a nuance to this, okay? Set a couple hundred points, maybe buy some calls, down a couple hundred points, maybe buy some puts because it'll it'll run. But usually when you get something like this on nothing, a rip your face off uh, futures on nothing, which we'll talk about, especially Goldman Sachs. Can you guys hear me? Are you still saying no sound? Hello, anybody? Okay, good. All right. Um, let's do a... Um, <clears throat> so, again, where's Waldo? Where are we, folks? We are present in the only moment, which is now, which is infinity. But anyway, um, we, have, we're, we, we really are skimming along the treetops of here, right? We're stuck in between this return to normal and fear. This is like, this chart is based on the history of markets. Today is not history. Today is now. Today is present. Xi Jinping, we're taking back Taiwan, whether it's peacefully or militarily, it's up to you all. Iran, we're getting a nuke. We're going to kill Israel. Uh, China, we're also in an economic war with the United States. Ukraine, we're going to take back Crimea. Putin, we're going to nuke you if you do that. It's insanity. Saudi Arabia, cutting oil. So... Nothing on this chart is based on what's going on today, but this is a pretty damn good guide. I've been doing this for 32 years, folks, and we are, we're stuck in here. We really, I, I get year to date, a lot of you have probably seen friends, not you all, because we're actually freaking a quarter of a million dollars in, in trades that I've posted publicly in our investment clubs. Uh, you know, I, I, we haven't seen fear. We trade the market we have, not the one we want. But we, we're definitely not anywhere close to this. This is, why, this is why you're here. How many times, if you weren't here, would you wake up in this morning and go, this is the bottom I'm in, only for it to be slammed even lower? This is not the bottom. We're not even close to the bottom. Okay, so don't get fooled by these, these rip-your-face-off rallies. We've seen them before, and we, we're going to see a lot more of them until we definitely get a bottom. Something, in my opinion, has absolutely got to break. Look at what the, the they did over in the UK. The, their, their bond market was breaking. They, they, they blinked. Uh, Janet Yellen last week, the Treasury Secretary of the United States, in an interview going, yeah, I'm really worried about Treasuries breaking. What? Holy shit. So nothing's broken yet. All right, real quick, let me remind folks, if you are an annual Full Throttle member or you just did the monthly 497, I want to test out the hunters, you have access to the hunters. So the only people that aren't, uh, in the hunters right now are solo Amazon. And if they're just in solo Amazon, they're not listening to me right now. So, uh, or if you're just in Tomcat charts, uh, everybody else, man, underneath member content, you should have hunters S D I S hunters, self-directed investment squadron. Uh, we have a ton of new members. We had, uh, where's my instructor panel right here. I mean, what was it last week? We had like 70, 75. Look at us now. 
big, big plus up in folks in here. So that's great. Welcome aboard uh, to all the new hunters. This is a great group, man. Very active uh, throughout the day. I get good trades out of here, get good intel, and I post all my good trades and intel uh, as well. Now, the lifetime folks, welcome aboard to all the lifetime folks. I got my, one of my brothers I went through flight school with in 92, 93 down in Kingsville, Texas. We got some doctors. We got, uh, I think, two professional money managers. We got a lady, Tina, on the west coast of Florida who owns apartment rental buildings who obviously uh, isn't doing so good. So if, if we can help uh, Tina out, I'm going to help her out over on the west. We, we have a wide swath of, uh, of new lifetime members and i'm really happy about that what i'm not happy about is that this call options expires larry jeff vipin uh, john you're mailing a check brian mark uh rick these call options expire today folks if you're in yellow that means i, I think something's in transit which is fine uh and we'll we'll work on that but folks this is this is a call option tori i need you to check your email uh as well um there's there's Jake. Um, so, folks, the call options uh, expires today. If you haven't communicated with me, like, hey man, I'm doing this. We gotta we're we're closing the doors, man. Uh, can't can't do this forever. We we need to get airborne with our uh, with our folks. So, if you're in communication with me, you're good to go. If you're in the yellow or your space is blank, if I don't hear from you by the end of today, man, that call option expired, worthless, and it's going to be very pricey if you want to reattack into the lifetime. Okay, cool. All right, uh, let's get airborne. Uh, this is devastating. Uh, I was a political science major, uh, knuckle-dragging kid from South Jersey. Uh, this is stunning. This Harvard poll, Harvard. Oh, yeah, like he went to Harvard. That's a trading places reference earlier in the brief. You should be happy with that. Um, it's La Boheme. It's an opera. Wow. Did you see the swing? Like a month ago, it was 18% women Democrats. They've gone, no, 16. They swung 18% Republican in a month. I told you this was going to happen. I told you a month ago, two months ago, I'm like, here comes the damn narrative. Biden's approval numbers are rising. We're, it's going to be a blue wave, and Nancy Pelosi will keep the House. This polls, these polls that came out, let me give you this. Scroll through this. It's insanity. I think, obviously, the Republicans take the House. Uh, the Senate might still be a toss-up or 51 to 52. Uh, the fact that, you know, I, I feel bad for the dude having a stroke. Clearly, if you're not fit for office, don't run for office. Uh, the dude should have bowed out, and the other guy he was running against probably would, would beat the Republican. But, but now, if you bring up the guy's mental capacities, you're a, you're, you're a whatever, you're a, a stroke shamer or something like that. My mom's had a stroke. She's like, I would never run for office after that. That's a disgrace. And she lives in Pennsylvania. So um, why am I rambling about this? Get ready. I've, I've, I've called this for a little while. We called this a year ago. I said, when, not if, the red wave hits in November, it could be a bull. bull it's going to be bullish. The market can't stand one party rule. Democrat White House, Senate House, it's awful. Regulations, taxes. Have you seen one Democrat ad or one Democrat campaign on the Inflation Reduction Act, even though they know it's bullshit and it's awful? Even the White House is like, yeah, the, the benefits don't start maybe until a year. It's actually like 10 years, the CBO said. But anyway, but this is devastating. Dig into this. It's insanity. All these I, I'm, I live in Florida, obviously, and Val Demings, every ad for her on TV is abortion. You know where abortion is on the list for people? It's at the bottom. Oh, and by the way, there's January 6th. There's like 19 other things other than January 6th. And the people that care about January 6th are the people that watch the hearings. Nobody cares about it unless you're nuts. The same people who care about January 6th didn't care about 10 months of fucking murders, burning, and looting in this country during COVID. COVID doesn't go in demonstrations. It doesn't attack social justice warriors. So I'm rambling through this because this could be a rip your face off rally. The stock market is not the economy. So th there's a red wave. I guarantee you the markets are going to like it. I guarantee you. 
Okay. Um, awful, awful uh, Wall Street Journal editorial yesterday. The U.S. military is growing weakness. It's a disgrace. This is one you got to read on your own, but the Heritage Foundation is just like, we are going to get destroyed. Not only could we not fight two regional battles, which used to be our doctrine, now it's, well, we can fight one big one over here and keep somebody stiff-armed. The Heritage Foundation, after doing a year of research, is like, we couldn't even fight the one. We could fight the one for a couple weeks, and especially based on all the shit we've given to Ukraine, we're, at, we're done in a week. Read this. Oh, and by the way, again, I've talked to both of my sons. I don't want them to serve. I would not raise my hand to serve this country today. Uh, I think it was Ponch or somebody, uh, you know, one of our VA deep throat or DOD deep throats is like the Pentagon is going ape shit because the number one recruitment source for the United States military since our existence has been who? Me. Veterans. We're the ones you usually have years of service. My brother, Hunter Ellis uh, Roach, his dad, you know, famous Vietnam. Guy. I mean, it's 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 families of service. The highest reduction in recruitment has been in veteran families. That should tell you everything. So read this op-ed when you get a chance, because the Heritage Foundation is like, we're, it's done. The Air Force and the Navy are getting destroyed. The Air Force isn't even pretending, even, even acting like they have an 80% fully FMC rate for their aircraft. They're shooting for 50. Our ships are getting destroyed. We're not even close. Why am I rambling about this? The Strategic Petroleum Reserve is being emptied. Our munitions are being emptied. And our I told Matthew, I showed Matthew and Jack this article last night. The, the air, typical Air Force pilot's getting like 10 hours a month. I thought I complained uh, when I was in the Navy, for, uh, like 20. They're not even close to being current and proficient. At the same time, China is rising. Please read this article. Why? Because God forbid, and I don't want this to happen, you guys know I like making predictions that fail because that means something good happened. I will bring this headline up, uh, up again in the future, and I will say this did not age well. So, yeah, exactly, Goose. It, uh, IP is instructor pilot. Actually, let me save this article to my TGO favorites because... I go scroll through memory lane and I'm like, nailed it. Uh, so um, on a daily basis, the president of the United States says shit. Did you see his Ron Burgundy moment yesterday? If you're experienced fraud, go to fraud, D-O-T, F-T-C. He read dot. He Ron Burgundy again yesterday. Every day the guy opens his mouth. Uh, there you go, Roland. Roland's saying the same thing. Former Marine won't let his. I, it's not like I can let. I, 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 I give. You guys know if you're a parent, you give your children guidance. And if they listen, great. If not, you still love them and support them. I do not want my son, either of them, fucking dying for Joe Biden or Kamala Harris. I know they want to fly jets and stuff like that. I got a fucking couple jets. Maybe that's why God did that. I got my own jets, kids. If you want to fly these, start building your hours. We'll make our own little Air Force. Navy. White House scrambles after Biden suggests Pakistan's nukes are unsafe. The uh, Karen, it's too late. It's too late, Karen. Eight years of Barack Hussein Obama installed generals like the current Secretary of Defense. We have quota generals. Shrek, our brother, who's a TGO member, he's a lifetime member. He's at FedEx now. He just retired as the commanding officer of the Marine Test and Eval Squadron. He's like, whiz, 97, 98% of my day was woke bullshit. Touch, it, it was nothing about flying, war fighting, or killing people. He probably could have made general. Most folks screen for general after that. He's like, I'm done. I, even if I screen for general, I'm out. So, um, it, it's this is it's bad, Karen. I, I'm with you. We need the best to turn it around. It's not going to happen. The best would have been, and I'm here's a little bit of ego. The best would have been my children. They would have gone in and uh, you know, not, no, not, not if you look at the uh, the mission statements for the service academies, 
Not one sentence in any service academy's mission objective is to fucking kill and win wars. Not one. I brought this up a year or two ago when I saw a report on it. It's to strengthen midshipmen to be well-rounded, awesome individuals, and it's fucking awful. Not anywhere does it say the purpose of the Naval Academy, the Air Force West Point, is to turn our enemies into hair, teeth, and eyeballs. There is no other mission. It's to engender a, uh, a, a, it's awful. But anyway, Joe Biden makes fun of one of our, you love him or hate him. That's, again, love or hate Donald Trump. He's like, hey, man, we got to deal with some bad actors sometimes that are on our side. It's life. The guy was a real estate developer in New York City. I'm sure he had to deal with the Girl Scouts who, who removed trash or did building or concrete. He's, when, the, when, the, when that journalist was murdered, uh, he's like, hey, man, it sucks. That's awful. But guess what? There's bigger shit going on in the world. How dare you deal with a pariah? And then Joe Biden. I'll never deal with this pariah. And Saudi Arabia is a backwards-ass country. Mr. President, you're flying to Saudi Arabia tomorrow to go beg for oil. Oh. So he says Pakistan's a bunch of idiots and they have nukes. The Pakistani president, premier, summoned the American ambassador and said, what the actual fuck, dude? <laughs> Strongly disagree with the basis, baseless judgment and reckless statement of the POTUS about our nuke program. The guy's a walking train wreck, folks. Now, most of you probably know that we have a SEAL team dedicated to the Pakistani nukes. Like if anything bad was going to happen in Pakistan, this is public knowledge. I'm not telling you a secret. You can Google it and probably find out. There is a dedicated, or maybe it's Delta Force. We have an entire team. Like if anything was, trust me. And there goes the S&P 500. 3750 is the Mason-Dixon line. We're going to slam here. Look at that. 37, look. How many times have we have I drawn 3750? Look at that. Here, here, drill bit, couple drill bits, chop. Slam. We'll get to that, but let's finish briefing. Uh, so Biden's an idiot, clearly. Uh, OPEC members line up to back the oil production cuts. A Saudi prince, not MBS, but related to MBS, since they're all related, said what yesterday? Saudi Arabia is a country built on martyrdom and jihad. Look it up. It's not up on one of my tabs. I'm like, did he just use the J word? Any threats against this kingdom and our economic stability or whatever, it's martyrdom and jihad. I'm like, oh, for the love of God. So not only... Well, Joe Biden and Democrats are trying to be best friends with Iran, who screamed death to America and want to nuke Israel and maybe us someday. So we want to be friends with them. But now we just completely pissed off our one ally in the region who's going to to Russia. You know what, Joe? We're good. I'll go be buddies with Vladimir Putin. You're, you'll be a pariah. We're cutting oil production. This guy's an ass. Kirby. He was on the Blue Angels with my one of my good buddies, Rick Young. He was the PAO. He he wasn't an aviator, man. He was and he's awful. So after Joe Biden threatening Saudi Arabia, OPEC members said, Oh yeah, you're gonna threaten our buddies. Now you got problems with us too. You can't I can't. 32 years of doing this, folks. I've seen some shit. I was in ground zero. Uh, in the financial crisis, in the CBOT, in the CBO. I've never seen this before, folks. This swirling storm of shit. Interesting news out of China yesterday. You ever, Did everybody, I'm sure you didn't watch it. I didn't. I'm getting the cliff notes. We have a China dude. We have a Hong Kong dude in our group. Um, Xi Jinping going for his third term as lifetime supreme leader of China. They're going to stop putting out their GDP numbers and other economic statistics. Remember years ago before the Trump trade war that we won with China and then they got the world sick. Um, we used to trade this stuff. I'm like, all right, at nine o'clock tonight, the China GDP and, you know, numbers come out and it would move our market overnight. China would release numbers and then you'd see our futures move. I, this was three, four five years ago. Now they're not even going to do it anymore. How long until the Democrats come out and say, we're not, you know, we're no longer going to start reporting our GDP and shit like that. 
Is China leading the way on this? But this is interesting. So potential trade opportunity, write this one down, FXI. You guys know about FXI? We have used to trade a shitload of it. Holy crap. I haven't looked at, it uh, tells you how long I've looked at the FXI. Wow. Holy shit. It broke, well, we, last time we talked about it, I'm, I dropped in the support line. And I said, if it breaks here, look out below. Holy crap. Exactly, Kathy. If there's, the, whenever a China number came out and I said, if it's bad, that means it's worse because they're lying. Now they're not going to even report. So maybe, just maybe, it's counterintuitive time. If they stop reporting, do, does it turn around and the FXI go up? I mean, holy shit, we are at you know five, five year low. Does it even go further back? We are at holy crap. This look at this, folks. There's Wiz and the Chicago Board of Trade in our financial crisis. And then look, we are at 2009 lows on China, the, the iShares large cap China ETF. So potential trade, either pound it into the dirt or put this on your whiteboard like I do of trade ideas of, do you get long? <laughs> write, that, write that down. I can't believe how bad this is. Holy crap. We haven't looked at the FXI in a couple months. Man, that is heinous. Okay. Uh, we briefed this ad nauseum yesterday in Solo, Solo Amazon. Iranian drones attacking civilian targets in Kyiv. Um, just awful, killing civilians. Um, it, it's, it's that time in the brief where Wiz says what, and we all do a shot. It's going to get worse. What? It's going to get worse. Ukraine can take Crimea by next summer, as long as we keep giving them weapons and ratcheting up the war. Oh. And I'm, I'm sure the Russians will, won't do anything about that. They're retreating. They're running home. They're disillusioned at home. Vladimir Putin's going to be overthrown. Awesome. You plan on all of that happening. Plan on it. Or... You could say that's a possible scenario, or you could look at this and go, holy shit, this is going to get worse. Me, as a fighter pilot, as an options trader, I plan for worse. There's no way in hell Vladimir Putin wakes up one day and says, you know what? Sorry. Fucked up. We're heading home. Get, just send me the bill. You believe that, you trade like that's going to happen. It's getting cold in Europe. Pipelines are blowing up. Ukraine's getting some tactical victories. The Soviet Union is saying, I don't know if you guys are really listening, but I'm going to say it again. We're going to use nukes if we have to. No, no, they won't. Same people who said, oh, they're not going to invade. You don't put 150,000 100, 150, troops on a border and not, you don't do that for fun. Anyway, it's going to get worse, folks. Here we go. A 100, I've never seen this in 32 years, guys. The forecast for a recession, if these ads would get out of the way, is 100%. Forecast for a U.S. recession within a year hits 100%. I've never seen this. This is a Bloomberg economics model. Every economist is forecasting in a year 100%. We might back, go back to, down to 36.75 today. Bear call spreads, buy some puts right now. Bearish double vertical for the day, maybe. So, folks, this is, i, I never seen it. A hundred percent. But we talked about this last week, didn't we? We talked about this. Economists now expect a recession and job losses by next year. Duh. Yeah, exactly, Kathy. Joe Biden, you'll never see helicopters flying into Kabul to rescue Americans off rooftops. That's exactly what happened. Anthony Blinken, the Secretary of State of the United States, was in the Hamptons partying that weekend and had to be flown back to D.C. 
That'll never happen. It literally happened. An insurrection actually happened, ladies and gentlemen. An armed group stormed into the Capitol to overthrow a democratically elected government. Yeah, that was January 6th. Uh, no, it wasn't. It was actually Kabul. An armed group stormed the Capitol, overthrow the Democrat. Uh, so there was an insurrection. I completely agree with people in this country. And it happened under Joe Biden. So the majority think the Fed will start cutting rates in 23 to early 24. Folks, that's, that's a full year. If you say late 2023, that's a year from now. So folks, look at this chart. Uh, let's look at this one. I drew this yesterday. For those of you who aren't in solo Amazon, let's draw it again. This is Wiz's prediction. There's the COVID bottom where Jerome Powell dropped the biggest financial nuke in the world. Here's the result of all the COVID infrastructure, build back better, blah, blah, bullshit. And this is going to happen. I guarantee it. We might even see 2,500. Who was it? Kramer yesterday. He's like, I, I surveyed all my billionaires in my in my in my contact list. He's like, all of them say we break at least three thousand on the S and P before we turn around. So again, are you one of those people that woke up that morning, that morning, that morning, that morning, maybe even that morning, and said, Ah, oh, this is the bottom. My standing orders as the commanding officer are sell every rip. Do not buy the dips. You can buy the dips. What's the exception? It's a freaking day trade, man. This one was a long squeeze. Why? Because of the Fed. We were, if you were in the Max Afterburner group or the Hunters, that might change my strategic mindset from the market's going to die to what? Bullish. Your strategic mindset shouldn't change that quickly. It absolutely can when the Fed chief goes, I don't want a taper tantrum. Who wants the market to go to bull bullish? And then all the Fed lieutenants and the XO ran out. And then uh, Jerome Powell went to Jackson Hole and used the P word, pain. Well, uh, average Americans are going to experience some pain. You mean the average Americans that didn't do any of this? The average Americans that don't have the ability on their laptop to hit enter and print money? Like you? So I know you, my fellow Americans, didn't do this, but you're going to pay for it. This is bad. Goldman Sachs earnings. So, well, Wiz, the market might be rallying a little bit because of good financial earnings. They're good and bad. The Goldman Sachs earnings uh, today were atrocious. If you want to short right now, again, I'm just rippling off trade ideas as they see them. JP Morgan, Goldman Sachs, Morgan Stanley. Short the shit out of them. But that's insanity. Okay, so something leaked here, obviously, the day before earnings, because it had a rip your face off rally the day before earnings. That's a leak. That's an Axe Capital moment. I would get bearish on JP Morgan, and I would sell the shit out of Goldman Sachs right now. Why? Did you dig into Goldman Sachs numbers? Goldman jumps as, as who? Traders. What goes on on Wall Street, folks? Thick. Fixed income, currency, and commodity trading. The FIC at Goldman Sachs, I was best friends with the GSAM, Goldman Sachs Asset Management in Chicago. He left. I still talk to him occasionally. But folks, this doesn't last. I'm here to tell you from a volatility arbitrage firm, if, you're, if your guys and gals do good in a quarter or figure out, you know, that's good. They adjusted their sales for that C condition but you're in a race with a crowded fleet unless everybody else in the fleet is a bunch of idiots and they're sitting there with their sales flopping. It's a one-time ad adjustment to those sales. Everybody else looks around or if they're smart enough, they had already done that to their sales. Here's the problem with Goldman Sachs. Read the rest of it. Revenue beat total earnings plunge. Why? Investment banking. If you looked at uh, Morgan Stanley, JP, all the, all these, Wall Street blue blood, seersucker suit dudes, firms, sucked. The, where's Ch Chamath, whatever that dude's name is? 
he poked his head up the other day. That dude during COVID and for the past year or so, you couldn't turn on CNBC without Shamath talking. Gone. His SPACs have been destroyed. Kind of like the whiz, you're late to the NFT party. I'll never go to that party. Somebody just bought a, 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 a JPEG of an ape for two million bucks. How do I short that market? SPACs. I'm starting a blank check SPAC. What is that? You just give me a blank check and I figure out what I'm going to do with the money. Are you fucking insane that that uh, I am going to write another book about the insanity that's happened for the past couple of years? Thank God I didn't get into that shit. But ladies and gentlemen, investment banking drying up at the big guys and gals is a canary in the coal mine. How many times have we seen a financial quarter like this where, oh my God, it's a horror at our investment bank, but the traders did really well. Y yay. That's why you have them. But boo for, for why you're Goldman Sachs. This is bad news for the financials. Short the shit out of the financials right now. Bearish on Goldman Sachs, JP Morgan, Morgan Stanley, all of them. They had the, this is a knee jerk pop. Once we, we, we start getting the, uh, the Amazons, the Microsofts, the Apples, if the, if the tech earnings suck, it, it, these, the air is going to come out of those financials. I guarantee it, folks. Yeah, exactly, Kathy. Everybody remember uh, a dude who did pizza reviews? I'm the smartest trader in the world. I think I posted that last week. Somebody made a video of like him from day one to like today. Him, I'm the smartest guy in the world. This is easy. I just made a million bucks. Holy shit. Why are they doing this? These guys are insider trading. I'm broke. He's like the E-Trade baby. Remember those commercials? Uh, ba, 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 ba. This, I, I, this is, I'm adding this. Where's my lesson learned? Let me add this to my favorites. This is going to my favorites, folks. I showed you this yesterday in Solo Amazon. If you're not in it, look at it. When the Fed pivots, what does that mean? When the Fed stops doing what they're doing, printing money and they raise interest rates, when they stop doing that, most people go, I'm going to buy with both hands. You'd be wrong. Historically, I get it's not today. Let's talk about history. In history, this is why the Fed has never landed the airplane safely. It's always died. Everybody's died in that airplane. Why? After they pivot and say, you know what? We're done raising interest rates. What happens? Crash. Fit Look at this. I'm in Chicago. I'm in the ready room in Miramar being an instructor pilot day trading. Look at this, folks. Heinous. Let's just stick with like recent memory up here. Look at that, ladies and gentlemen. And as you go forward in time from the Gulf War recession when I was in college, they get worse. So just don't think that, hey, when the Fed pivot, you might get a, some trading going on, right? Jerome Powell, I, I, I think we can kind of pause raising interest rates. You will get a rip your face off trading rally. But ex don't expect an all clear to sound when Jerome does this. Does that make sense? Exactly. That's exactly right. You got it, Gro Goose. You nailed it. Okay. Uh, Go Goose posted this before I jumped online. I wasn't going to talk uh, to you about this but maybe we can put it in the accelerated retirement brief on Thursday. And we have done this a couple times of late, right? I've told people, if you don't like the volatility going on right now, what does that mean? Cash. Cash is a position. It, well, I was going to say it holds its value. It doesn't. Every month, you, you have worked for free one month this year because of inflation the eight point whatever inflation rate, you have technically worked for free. You've lost a month of pay due to inflation. But anyway, instead of losing more than that, sit in cash right now. I'm long some Amazon and psychedelics. That's it. So step one right now could be what? Cash, hang out. Step two could be what Goose is talking about. And we've brought this up a couple times is what? Go find some high dividend paying stocks. The number, the first thing that comes to mind is what? Utilities. 
They ain't going to FPNL, Florida Power and Light. They ain't going out of business anytime soon. Buy some utilities that give it a three, you know, just Google it, folks. High dividend paying stocks. I'll, I'll, I'll table this to Thursday. We'll talk about this Thursday, but buy, buy stock. Weird. I'm an options guy. No, buy the stock and then do what? You're getting the dividend and you sell some at the money to slightly out of the money calls. And you can do a good five to 8% a month, which will neutralize you losing 8% a month due to inflation. Exactly. So, Goose, I'm talking about maybe getting delta neutral. If you're just sitting in cash, you're losing 8% a month. You could buy some dividend, high dividend stocks. I'll put this. I got this for, uh, for, for AR. We'll talk about this on Thursday. But here's your homework. Find some high dividend paying stocks that you like, that you wouldn't mind having in your portfolio. And I'm going to tell you how to, how to neutralize inflation, right? Because you'll get the dividend from the stock, and then you can sell upside calls against your long stock position. I will teach you how to do this. Got a little bounce off of 37.25. Again, if you're new, the SPX trades in these $25 increments, folks, usually of late. Whoops, let me go with today. Look at that. Right up to 37, almost, you know, a little north of 50, but let's just say, it, it, there you go, 37.50. Now we're down, now we're stair stepping down to 37.25. If we don't hold here, it's look out below. If we hold here, we might be in a trading range. So stand by for some potential sniper shots. But again, guys, I I'm itching right now. I'll get some penicillin. Uh, but the, the, these are these are ripe to pound into the dirt, especially J.P. Morgan. Did you hear Jamie Dimon last week? He's like, this is war. This is awful. He's the guy who three to six months ago got on board our where we were, and he said, it's a hurricane. There's a hurricane coming. There is a massive financial crisis coming. Uh, but dividend stocks, this can be a nice either sit in cash right now if you don't like this volatility. Whiz, I don't like day trading or sniper shots. Is there anything? Oh, there, look at that. Ponch beat me to it. That's why you got a ponch in your airplane, man. Extra set of eyeballs. So Ponch just called it. There you go. Get ready for Pound Town. I just saw a big break right there. Ponch saw it. There, see? Boom. Look out below. Nice. <clears throat> okay. Now, let's do what we did last week. All right. Now, let's get tactical. For those of you that are all new, that was a long one. That was a long strategic and operational brief, but now we get tactical. But this is how you have to trade. You don't ever come into a TGO Live trade brief and go, hey, where's the trades? Stop. Stop. Strategic, brief, operational, domestically, then we get tactical. What can we also, instead of just doing sniper shots on the S&P 500, what can be, we also be doing? What do you think? Well, let's go look at the VIX real quick. How do I know, Wiz, how do you, nice job, Paul. Nice shot. How do I know that we haven't, seen fear yet or capitulation and this isn't the bottom it's on your screen man this is your altimeter the vix the volatility index in my experience in three decades of doing this ain't even close to fear or capitulation let's take a look at a one-year chart of the vix you are here right now hell back in March, you know, we're not even close. Let's do two years. Holy shit. How about five? Now you're talking. I get it. This was a pandemic, a scandemic, whatever you want to call it. And hopefully, God forbid, we won't see something like that again. But folks, I mean, even look at these, man. The, the VIX, the fear gauge, the uncertainty gauge, is not flashing panic yet. Ladies and gentlemen, if you're sitting there going, holy shit, Wiz, look at the one-year chart here. This ain't panic? No. 
This is not panic, ladies and gentlemen. This is actually orderly. It might not have felt orderly if you weren't here and pounding it into the dirt with us. Nice job, Tony. So for the new folks, make sure you listen to me because I'm I'm teaching and I, I wish I could. I, I guess I could. Um, take the sniper shots, man, as I called them out. I didn't call out strikes on this one, but Tony's smart enough to uh, have done them and Paul too. No offense, I'm going to grab both of those. So good call, Ponch. Oh, Ponch sent that right to me. Ponch and I were talking on the ICS. All right. Let's stick with volatility, though, uh, because, folks, when, when I'm telling you, when you wake up in the morning and you're like, oh, this is the today's the bottom. You most bottoms, folks. Again, this could be a different one. Wiz, you're the one that says be present. Nobody's seen this day before. Right. Maya Angelou. What a beautiful day. I don't think I've seen this one before. Exactly. You've never seen this day before. However. In trading, past performance sometimes can be indicative of future results. Most bottoms are characterized by what? Wash out, just exhausted selling. Get me out no matter what it takes right now, Mr. Financial Advisor. I haven't seen it. It's also sometimes characterized by what? A massive spike in volatility. You haven't seen it. So again, during these days, ladies and gentlemen, these are all, these are all, you know, I, I don't even like calling them, uh, nice job, Tony. I love hearing about that real account. All of, look at these, man. Implosion, bounce, implosion, bounce, implosion, bounce, implosion, bounce. Yeah, that can happen. It's not. And if you're ever in doubt, you know, I already just covered the VIX, roll inverted and look at the S&P 500. Here we go. That's the S&P 500 upside down. Anybody see a trend here? Rip your face off, rally, pull back, rip your face off, rally, pull back, rip your face off, rally, pull back, rip your face off, rally, pull back. That's what I think. But that can certainly happen. But what would that be? Breaking news, Zelensky and Putin have been talking secretly and there's peace. Oh my God, rip your face off rally. Um, I'm not going to list all the good news that could happen, but it ain't economically. I got to be honest with you folks. We talked about this last week when that inflation was hot. I'm like in front of the election, the fact that a bunch of government bureaucrats, which are most likely Democrats from the BLS reported a hot number. It's it, you know that's a lie. It's hotter. I guarantee you it's hotter than what they're telling us. But there's no way in hell they could have gotten away with it, right? They already got busted for the Obama one, the jobs report. So um exactly. History doesn't repeat it rhyme. So, all right. So let's let's fire some tactical trades here. I like VXX right now. Let's go look at VXX. You can trade VIX, um, but VXX. Uh, it's down today. Why? Because we got this rip your face off rally. But a couple of weeks ago, we did a bull put spread on VXX, right? And it was shacked it. Um, what did we do? We did like the 19 and a half. I think volatility is going to stay up here. I think as the week goes on, there's nothing really on the flight schedule. I think out on what's on Friday. Uh, 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 uh. Oh, how'd the NH, the National Association of Home Builders. Whoa. We talked about this. Rep Holy shit, man. We have not looked at this since I have not looked at this since last month. Anybody see a trend with housing? Holy crap. I have a lot of, shockingly, I have a lot of guy and gal friends in South Florida that are real tours and they are starting to scramble. Holy shit. That's why, you know what, from 10 o'clock on, that, that you know, I should have briefed that, but yeah, at 10 o'clock, the NHP comes out. What happened at 10 o'clock? <clears throat> Housing is falling apart. 
whoa, that's a canary in the coal mine, folks. The housing market, we knew this was coming. Low interest rates, free money. Of course, the housing market's going to have a bubble. It's popping. It's either popped or it's popping. Whoa. Wednesday. Building permits, housing. All right, so tomorrow we'll get another look at housing. Yeah, well, there you go, man. Uh, it doesn't take a rocket surgeon to see what's good. Look at look at the building permits. That's the applications, folks. Hey, my name's Tony. I want to build some homes in your city. Uh, actually, not anymore. Housing starts. All right. So XHB. I think we talked about this months ago. I was early. I was early on that XHB trade. Has anybody been pounding XHB into the dirt? The XHB, if you're new, is the what? The Home Builder Index, which makes zero sense that it's up today. Now, how many, hold on, we're, we're potentially trading the wrong thing. Let me ask you all a question. How many home build, this is like a Bugs Bunny question. Who was buried in Grant's tomb? Uh... How many home builders are in the XHB? How many home builders are in the XHB? Is this on? Uh, where are the holdings? Uh, 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 I'm going to teach you some things. I am fairly certain it's not a lot. Exactly, Arrow. So there's a DR and a Lamo. It's it's mainly the others. It's got low. Oh, you know what? I haven't looked at the holdings in years, but it used to be none. They called it the Home Builders ETF, and there wasn't any home builders in it. They've rebalanced. Here's what I was getting at. It's usually the stuff around it, like a Home Depot, Lowe's, the, the siding, the roofing. But I, now I, I make myself look like an idiot. There's actually four home builders now. In the old, the JCI is in it as well, Johnson Controls. It used to be all the, I didn't think I was going to use this word today, ancillary. It used to be the stuff around the home builders. But now, maybe because I complained, there are a couple of home builders in there, so I'm wrong. But here's my point. This is this is a little weird that the XHB is up today with horrific housing data. But when you see something like that, that's potentially when you take a shot. Let's look at what it did actually for the day. Well, there you go. There's the 10 o'clock report and it came down. So put that on the list of potential trades. I, I, I want to get some VXX on and some volatility trades, however. That's exactly right, Lawrence. It's a great point. As the housing market goes down, what are two good stocks to own? Home Depot and Lowe's. People are like, well, we can't afford to buy a new home. Let's fix up our old one. That's a great, uh, that's a great trade right there. We did this last week. Um, and uh, Eli, absolutely. We talked about that when Ian was coming. What did I say? In the old days, that was the hurricane index. It was like Home Depot, Lowe's, maybe it was JCI. There was like a little, maybe it's even an ETF now. I don't think they call it the hurricane. You can make your own hurricane ETF. It's not as pronounced nowadays because it's a crowded trade. All right, there's a tropical depression off the Bahamas. Buy the home builders or buy Home Depot and Lowe's. Um but I like a, a, a nice little, exactly, you know, Tina, a new lifetime member. She's over on the West Coast, rebuilt. She's got five rentals. She's like, Wiz, I am, uh, it's not doing too good over there. Yeah, we got to bounce off that one, just like it did yesterday. It bounced off of the, it's, it's kind of bouncing off of right here, so we'll see. But this is what we did yesterday, man. You know that that we, I, I wrote this in the in the uh, afterburner uh, yesterday. I'm like, I haven't seen the S and P 500 move like that in a day in a long, long time. We literally were level for hours. 
we might get back into that range right here. Because even look at like a couple of days ago, it was just like this slow implosion down, but it, it it was down. But this this was weird yesterday. This was perfect. I think uh, Sledge did it. I was a swamp yesterday. This was perfect. What yesterday? This was perfect iron condor trading, folks. If you're into sniper shots and the SPX day trades. So if we settle into a range here, get ready to maybe we can do some an iron condor on a day trade. But enough. Let me let's let's put on a VXX trade out to Friday. Oh, no kidding, Goose. Yeah, I believe it. Uh, I like this trade. So as the market's going to go up a little bit here, let me put VXX in the background. Uh, and we could even maybe do an iron condor on volatility for the week. So let, let me minimize this. Let's compare VXX to the S&P 500 right now. So they move opposite of each other, right? It's opposite day. So here's the SPX up here. Here's VXX. So as the market goes up, VXX tends to go down. As the market goes down, VXX tends to go up. So I think, and again, let me lead with cash as a position. Don't, don't, this is a semi-aggressive trade. I think we did this, what, two weeks ago? I think it was, yeah, this was a Monday. This was a Tuesday in the PLTB. I'm like, eh, I think we're probably going to, if you get a rip your face off out of the gate Monday and there's a little follow through Tuesday, Wednesday's usually a hover, Thursday's down and Friday's a slam. That's exactly what happened last week. Not saying that's definitely going to happen this week. It tends to do that. Rip your face off. Rat. And that these were big. Remember those? We had like an Amazon trade on an SPX or volatility trade and people in the Tuesday live trade brief like this were chewing their fingernails. I'm like, it's Tuesday. There is a world. We could all be dead in a nuclear exchange by Friday. God forbid. It's a world of time. So I would look at getting, I think, Ponch shot a bearish trade on SPX out a couple days or maybe even a week. I would look at a bearish trade out the Friday, but let's do a, a bullish trade on volatility, right? Does that make sense? SPX is going to come down. Volatility should at least stabilize or go up a little bit, okay? Let's look at this. And it was 15 cents. Now it's 14. I'd look to sell 150 of Friday. And it's options expiration on Friday, folks. Today is the third Friday of October. It's going to be a very volatile week and a very volatile Friday. But sell 150 let me put it in the training over here. Sell 150 VXX. Sell 150 of Friday's 120 puts. That's me saying I don't think the VXX is going to go below 20 by Friday. Or it's going to be at least above 20 by expiration, by the closing bell on Friday. Whiz, you're wrong. Jesus, Ganesh, Buddha, Muhammad came back to life. Market went up to infinity and volatility went to zero. Great. I'll be happy if they all come back to life. Actually, they are all alive right now. I don't want to offend people. But um, that's why we buy the downside puts in case volatility implodes as the market explodes. Okay, that can happen, folks. This could be a one of those get out of the way, rip your face off rallies. I'm warning you. It's my job as the instructor to warn you about potential bads. That would be a potential bad. The way the market opened today, hovered, and kind of, this isn't like last Tuesday, okay? Let me grab a screenshot of this. I would try and get filled on this trade at 14 cents plus or minus a penny, meaning uh, the lowest I'd go is about 13. The highest I'd go, uh, you know, is about 15, okay? File, save as, VXX. Desktop, VXX, 10, 18. Okay, while we're on this screen, we talk about the bad. If I get filled at 14 cents, I want all 14 cents. If it starts going up in value, 20, 21, 28, I double the credit that I take in. If I take in 14 cents and God forbid it goes up to 28, maybe eject. You got to look at the trade and go, why is the S&P climbing and volatility coming in? Is it a one-time pop or is it, okay, get out of the way? 
14 cents. Write that down on your trade plan. If this trade goes up to 14 cents, maybe eject. You're the pilot in command. You look at the trade. You look at what's going on and go, should I get out of this at this point? Is it a pop or is it going to come back in? Okay. Um, now we look at the bad or let's look at the bad first. Right now, folks, you always, always, always look at this first, max potential loss. You never look at max profit first. Why? It's a mental thing. Who doesn't want to make 2100 bucks this week on one trade? Fucking duh, Wiz. Don't look at it. Of course, you want to make 2100 bucks on a trade this week, but you look at this first. If this is not acceptable to you, man, I don't want to lose 5400 bucks. Don't do 150 contracts. Wiz, I'm going to risk 10 grand. Great. Fly your airplane. You do 300 contracts. I can't tell you guys what to do. You are the pilot in command of your own airplane. Now, if you look at this and go, yeah, that would suck if that happened. But you know what? I accept that risk. I'm the pilot in command. I'm putting a check mark next to this. I acknowledge that's the risk. Then you can look up uh, Mr. and Mrs. Happy, they, them, there, and say, all right. There's a using at the money volatility in VXX options as Wiz is speaking to me. There's a 63, 64% probability. There's a 23% probability of getting my ass kicked, but not, it, it, that's only if you're not looking at it, man. Right? We talked about the 28 and the SPX is going back down to 37.25. So volatility is going to start ticking up. So let me finish talking about it so I can place the damn trade. How do we make money in this trade? We make money three out of four ways. See that dotted line right there? That is the current price of VXX. VXX goes up, cha-ching. VXX can hover, man. And I, matter of fact, I think it'll probably hover for the week. We make money. Folks, it can even go down a little bit as long as it stays above what? The break even. The VXX can go as low as 1986. I was a junior in high school. Top Gun came out. Uh, and look at that. There's a 68% probability of at least breaking even or making some money. Okay, let me grab a screenshot of this to send out in a text alert and an email. Now, on this screen right now, folks, we already talked about the bad. We talked about the bad. When would I maybe eject out of this trade? I said, if it doubles in value. Let's talk about the good. When would I close this trade? This is why I don't send out closing text alerts because we briefed it. No reason to brief something or to repeat something already briefed. Seven, eight, nine. If you're looking at a 70, 80, or 90% profit on this credit you're taking in. Folks, soon as you place this trade and get filled, you bring in a credit if you do 150 contracts of 2100 bucks. Now, if you're Ebenezer Scrooge, you want every penny of that. You want 2100 bucks. I don't. I want 70, 80, or 90% of that. Pigs get slaughtered. Have I done this in my career? Yep. Do not turn a 70, 80, 90% trade into a 100% loser. I did that in the Navy. I would have a trade on. It's, ah, it's up 85%. I'm going to go play golf at the base golf course. Get back to the computer after the closing bell, and it completely went the other direction. Son of a, don't do it. Pigs get slaughtered. If you're looking at a 70, 80, 90% profit on this credit you took in, close it. I guarantee you if you don't, you might go for a long streak of, nah, man, I let them all expire worthless. You'll have a good streak, and then you're going to get kicked right in the teeth. And that loss is going to be greater than all the little profits you had. Everybody understand that. Give me a vertical head nod. And I suck because it already ran away from me. So if you got filled when I initially started talking about it at 15 cents, you're already up 300 bucks. Dang it. Why? Because the S&P is getting ready to slam. Um, shit. I'm going to I'm going to I'll go uh, I'll fire the order at 13. So here's a good I'm going to go about an extra five, 10 minutes. Why? Because this is a perfect example of Wiz. Why do you in your text alerts put plus or minus and give me a range? 
Because folks, if it goes outside of that little range, what happened? VXX either moved up or moved down. So you have to evaluate it if it's outside of that range. In this case, if it's all the way down here at 12, what's the deal? Well, guess what? I'm risking more money for potential less profit. You can still fire it. I just kind of tell you that range. You might want to move the strikes. Now, there you go. Look at that. We're slamming through 37. 25, it's look out below. I'm, I want to try and get filled on this one. Oh, son of a bitch. Which account is this? All right. Well, that's the trade I want to do. Um, damn it. That's the trade I want to do. I'll, I'll grab the uh, the text from that. Damn it. I've got to fix this account. Let me at least get this, VXX. Exactly, Sledge. He's bringing up a good point. If you want to potentially adjust, so if it's outside of that that range that I give you, plus or minus two cents, maybe you want to move the strikes either up or down. It depends on, it just depends. Now, remember, if none of this is making sense to you, you clearly haven't watched any of the full throttle training and the full throttle training, which I'm scheduling, I think, for two weeks from now. I don't have my calendar in front of me. Okay. So sledge is sledge nailed it, man. If it moves outside of the range, you, that, that's a heads up for you to maybe move the strikes up or down. Okay. In this case, it would be move the strikes up, but that's a little, you know, the 20 and a half, 20 out to Friday is a little aggressive for me. I, I wouldn't, I would not do that in this case because yeah, that's all the way up here. I, I like the, the 20 and the 19 and a half. We're kind of with these 50 cent strikes, you're, you're in a little bit of a dead person zone here. Okay. I would also have, and again, in the, in, in the old days, in the primary brief, folks, we'd be talking about month out trades or maybe six months or the Santa Claus rally or a year. You can't in this volatile market. So either get into cash, uh, get into some of those dividend stocks that we'll talk about in AR on Thursday, or, or do this sniper kind of trading that we're doing. But I do think we're gonna we're gonna give back this Monday Tuesday rip your face off rally and 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 head back down. Uh, I think we might even get back down to this thirty six seventy five today because we're we're itching right below here, man. This is this is looking this is heavy up here. Whenever you see a rip your face off open like this on nothing. You know, don't always believe the futures markets, man. It's a different market. It doesn't always portend what's going to happen that day. So, but we're going to see, we did this yesterday, man. I look at that. Just that was four, four hours, five hours of range bound, which is rare. I mean, look at, look at this folks. I guess the only other time was maybe that was only two hours. So, uh, I mean, this there there was moves. That's massive moves, massive, and then that. So that and that, it does not happen often. And usually, what happens after a an afternoon of nothingness, massive move, right? Again, this is not fundamentals. It's not volatility. It's a little. It's ten percent technical analysis. The rest of it is human behavior. When you get these type of of boring things you get massive moves after them so it's a potential uh it's potential sniper shots all right i gotta open another portfolio to put that vxx trade in i'm actually going to add that to uh no my personal account i do volatility trades mine Susie. i'm a little bit more conservative Susie's a hell of a trader of course her portfolio is going to be better than mine i don't think she even knows the logins but anyway all right guys good stuff um, one more time, man. If I don't have an email from you, uh, your your call option on the lifetime stuff expires today, man. There's some blanks in here. Uh, so if you don't, if I don't have an email from you today, like, hey, man, here's what I'm doing, then uh, we got to, we're, we're done. And for, I'm doing my 2023 strategic planning. We're probably going to go up to 25 grand on that lifetime membership, especially if we add a, a futures product or a commodities product. Ain't adding no crypto unless I go full Jamie Dimon and, 
offer a service that I would never do. And it's just about the money. That's usually not me. So uh, you, you probably will not see a crypto product from Top Gun Options. All right, folks, good stuff. Uh, I'll get the replay posted uh, shortly, and I will text and email this trade at, trade out. Welcome uh, aboard to all the new Lifetime members. That was a good, this was a good deal. And then obviously, uh, welcome aboard to all the new hunters uh, in here as well, man. This is good stuff. Um, and we will be back uh, tomorrow. Thanks, Paul. I appreciate it. All right, guys, have a great rest of your day. Uh, the replay takes about 20 minutes to render, and I'll post it on the replay page. Uh, have a great rest of your day. Happy hunting. Make sure you hedge. Fights on. Namaste. And I'll talk to you tomorrow for the weekly options brief. See ya.